Okay, for the brave souls that have endured the, the last presentation today, it's loud. The last presentation of today is going to be by Nati Rubin. Nati is from Checkpoint, and the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Please Thank go ahead. Much. Drink some whiskey. Yeah, I will. What? set up my laptop. No, it's fine. I'll, I'll use the mic. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Nathaniel Rubin and I'm a vulnerability researcher at uh, Checkpoint Software Technologies. Today I'll be talking about the RC I found at the very popular e-commerce Magento. So, without further ado, let's begin. Magento. Oh, you will figure that out. Uh, so, what's Magento? Well, it's an e-commerce platform which is the kind of platform companies use when they want to open an online shop. So it's the most popular in the world with over 30% market share. And it's currently owned by eBay after being purchased in 2011 for $180 million. In all aspects, this is the e-commerce platform to use if you are opening an online shop. It is flexible, reliable, and very corporate oriented. This is why hacking it can be very significant. So what did we found in Magento? Basically, we found an unauthenticated remote code execution attack. That means that an attacker can take over any Magento store without any prior conditions. The vulnerability is in Magento's core, so we don't need any specific plugin to be installed first. And it's not an XSS type of attack where admin interve intervention is needed for it to work. If you are interested in the full white paper, please have a look for the Analyzing the Magento Vulnerability blog post at Checkpoint's blog. So now is the, t now is the time to understand how Magento works. As I said, Magento is very flexible and it allows anyone to develop new custom features. In order to provide that interface, Magento is made out of several small pieces of code, each providing different functionality. At its base, Magento is made out of modules. Modules are basically packages containing code for different parts in the system. For example, there's a module responsible for the purchasing system, a one for the customers, one for products, and so on and so on. Modules are made out of controllers, which are PHP classes providing specific functionality for different parts in the module. For example, there's a login controller, a product view controller, a forget password controller, and many more. These controllers are made out of actions, which are methods inside the controller class that contains the actual code for the controller's functionality. Now, how does a regular HTTP request look like? So for regular and unauthenticated users, it's basically made out of the module name, which is colored blue here, and then the controller name, which is colored in green, and then if needed, a specific action. For administrators, it looks exactly the same, except this time an admin prefix is inserted at the start of the URI, which can be seen colored in purple here. But enough with the small talk, let's talk about the vulnerability. So, First, we need to bypass the admin authentication. Gaining access to the admin controllers can gain us access to powerful controllers and expand our attack surface. When Magento encounters an admin request, it first checks it for an active session. If it can find any, he then checks for a login attempt. If both hasn't been sent or the supplied credentials are invalid, Magento changes the controller we, re we requested into the default login controller basically overriding our controller. 
That is important to note because Magento doesn't block our request. It just changes the controller. But how does Magento decide when to change our controller and when not? So let's have a look at the code. You can see that the line marked in yellow is the line responsible for changing our controller. But look at the line above it. It checks if some kind of parameter named forwarded is false, and if it does, only then it changes the controller. Meaning that if that parameter was set to true, the, contr the controller change will not get executed. But how can we control it? Well, Magento made a false assumption and treated that parameter as an internal property set only by the system, which in reality, this parameter is part of the HTTP request instance and can actually be controlled by the HTTP parameters as well. So if we're to send this request where the forwarded get parameter is set to one, the check will fail and our controller will not change. That means we can now access the admin panel unauthenticated. The only problem with this bypass is that some controllers are also checking for specific privileges. As we are unauthenticated, we of course don't have any. One of the controllers who doesn't check for privileges is the what you see is what you get controller. That's responsible for displaying images using a user inputted path. This is the code for that controller. We control the directive variable through an HTTP parameter. Let's have a look at this line of code and wh where filter is being called, that line. Filter is actually a method inside the admin template parsing class. As we are the input for that function, we are actually treated as an admin template file and thus can use any template directive we want. So one of those directives is the block directive. That directive allows us to create a block class and execute a method inside it. Now, that is a huge step forward as we are now deep inside the internal system mechanism and can access a lot of code. Blocks allows us to filter the, their data using an SQL, SQL where statement. Because we are treated as administrator, we can control the field on which this statement is executed on, and a field is considered safe and is not being escaped against an SQL injection. So now we have an SQL injection, meaning we can alter the DB as we'd like. So we'll be using this injection in order to insert a new file record into the database. This is how the exploit lo looks. So, <coughs> Our file is considered as an image an administrator has uploaded. For performance issues, Magento only stores the file in the DB first and creates it on the actual file system only when someone tries to access it. But how can we access it? Simple. We access it using the getPHP script which extracts images from the DB into the file system. And now it exists physically on the file system. Unfortunately, our file has been created in the media directory that contains the images for the system. Because it's an image directory, CGI scripts located there can be executed. So we don't want to override the HTTP access because it's too suspicious. We'll just skip that. But how can we create a valid image file and execute any PHP code we'd like inside? Well, we'll LFI it, of course. LFI is an attack used to execute files otherwise not executable. After a quick look around, I came across this function which includes any file that we want. Looks good, right? We control the path being included and thus being able to include our file. But life isn't always that good and in reality a forward slash is appended to our file. Obviously, an ending slash makes our file path into a directory path and as known, directories cannot be included by PHP. So, what can we do? Well, we'll RFI it, because we control the entire path prior to that slash. We control the stream wrapper as well. PHP has many stream wrappers, such as HTTP and FTP, but unfortunately, unfortunately for us, those wrappers 
cannot be used in PHP versions greater than 5.2, which came out in 2006, nine years ago. So this LFI seems of no use to us. But wait, what about the wrapper FAR? So what's FAR? FAR is an almost hidden stream wrapper that acts as a jar for PHP files. It's actually an archive containing PHP files and code. If a FAR is included, its PHP stub code is executed. But what happens when we try to include a FAR file with an ending slash, like in our case? The answer is, it is actually treats the ending slash as the root for the FAR file, file as FAR is really an archive. This hidden, not known wrapper just saved our day and allows us to execute our LFI. So finally, we managed to include our file and execute it via the system, which allowed us to completely compromise and control any Magento store. So I have a little video here. Let's play it out. That's actually the POC we've published for the vulnerability. Well, we can see a store. It looks just nice. We want to buy, I don't know, something expensive, as we're not paying for it anyway. So let's go for, I don't know, 99,000 and above. Let's check out this watch, which is very expendable watch. Ooh, shiny. So we obviously want it. Let's add it to the cart. So we've added it to the cart, and the grand total is 100K thousand dollars. It's, it's a lot of money for a watch, I think. So let's create a coupon discounting our, uh, our watch. We'll just run our script, which will create a coupon for us. That's nice. Coupon number, of course, is lit. And yeah, zero money required, no cash involved. The system can figure out what we did, so she just tell us, hey, where do you want to send the watch? We didn't, we didn't know this, you haven't paid for it. Right, so now you're probably asking yourself, who uses such a vulnerable system? Well, eBay does. <laughs> Together with Samsung, Lenovo, Olympus, Vizio, Nike, the New York Times, and a quarter of a million other stores. But why hacking a Magento store is so significant besides free watches? Well, mainly because it stores the customer credit cards, allow, allowing an attacker to steal any future cards being used, and on some stores, even the previous ones. It, although, it, it also handles the purchasing process, allowing an attacker to change the, the owner bank account to his, for example, and if he wants to, he can even buy things for free, as I showed earlier. Also, on a more corporate level, it allows an attacker to steal customers' full data together with the addresses and phone numbers. The most surprising fact of all is that all in all, Magento stores worldwide handles over $60 billion per year, a staggering amount for a system so unsecure. So have we reported it? Yeah. We reported to eBay's security contact and provided the full uh, technical description, which granted us 20,000 US dollars as a bug bounty reward, which we decided to to charge. Now, have they fixed it? The simple answer is yes. Magento released a patch to address the flaws, although the patch blocks the described attack. It's still not a perfect, it's still not a perfect patch, because they left several non-critical flaws remained unattended. It's important to note that we have published the vulnerabilities only after we made sure there is a patch after a total of 96 days after the private disclosure. 96 days. So to sum up, even if it's the e-commerce system, even if it's handling $60 billion per year, 
And even if it's owned by eBay, it seems like no code is secure. Thank you very much.